My name is Christian von Königsegg. For half of my life, I've been on the quest to be a leader in the hypercar industry, utilizing Swedish design combined with visionary technical solutions. So since the inception of the Regiera over a year ago, uh, I've explained the direct drive and how simple it is. And still people have a little bit hard time getting their head around how it actually works. So I'm going to show you a little bit more in, in, in detail to hopefully explain it clearly. Uh, it's basically removing components from a parallel hybrid, making it more or less as simple as a series hybrid, but without the energy losses and energy conversions you have in a series hybrid. Uh, and making it more efficient than a parallel hybrid, but with much less components. So, how does this all work then? Basically, we have the combustion engine uh, with an electrical motor on the crank. So far, it's kind of easy to see what's going on. The electrical motor on the crankshaft uh, acts as a starter motor, as a generator, as a torque adder and power adder. And it can also charge, I mean, as a generator alternator, it can also charge the 800 volt battery that's on board. Actually the Riera is the world's first 800 volt EV or, or PHEV plug-in hybrid electrical vehicle in existence. But going back to the direct drive, uh, we have the electrical motor, we have the combustion engine, the electric motor sitting on the crank, and then we have what we call the hydracoup or the hydraulic coupling. This is before we get to the final drive unit and those electrical motors. So, uh, with no gearbox and no neutral, how can you run the engine while standing still? Well, we say we have a hydraulic coupling uh, that we can open up and close, pretty much, but it also has a torque converter effect into it. And in many ways, what we see in front of us, which is the uh, hydraulic coupling we've designed for the car here in-house at Koenigsegg, is a traditional lock-up torque converter, taken to the extreme. Normally, you would find a, a a lockup converter in an automatic transmission car. Uh, the converter itself, without the lockup function, was invented, I don't know, 100 years ago or something like that. Um, and, and it manages to convert more torque when you're driving slowly through a hydraulic turbine like process. And I think why this isn't being used by other hybrid cars, we know no other using it for a hybrid drive. It's because it's kind of not an ob it's old school and unobvious in a high tech environment, but it does some really cool things that makes the direct drive work really well. We could we could use more of a traditional clutch and still make it work, but we wouldn't be able to accelerate as fast in combination with having that kind of top speed we have without it. So I will open this up and look a little bit inside for you guys. Uh, we also talk to torque converter manufacturers to see if they could help us do something like this. Uh, but it was really difficult to explain our needs and, 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 and for them to get the head around what we were doing or even have an interest in doing something in low volume. So that meant we had to develop it ourselves and get basically experts on, on um, hydraulic uh, turbine technology, which a torque converter is. Um, the difference between a nor normal torque converter and this one is that it's much lighter compared to its size, as it's all machined aluminium in every aspect. The, the other aspect is that normal torque converters take off. Well, the engine and the torque converter takes off in, and the car takes off in first gear. So it has a certain resistance compared to the power because the car is in first gear. Our car, or the Regera, is in the equivalent of seventh gear, as you can, with no gears, drive 250 miles per hour without shifting. Basically, we are in the seventh gear of the Agera. That's our final drive ratio. Um, so, it has a much tougher job than any torque converter before it, because we're putting 1,200 combustion engine horsepower and uh, 160 kilowatt or 200 horsepower of electrical motor that sits on the crank. The other electrical motor sits behind this unit, so it's unaffected by it. 
um, and you're in seventh gear and you're standing still. So we had to come up with completely new uh, blade designs to convert more efficiently on a, on, a, on a higher level of conversion than before. This is the stator unit that also kind of acts like a kind of like an oil gear inside the torque converter. And this had to be designed very carefully, again, to have as low stall point of the torque converter as possible. And as you can see, it's all beautifully machined aluminium. And compared to its size, we have more uh, surface area for torque conversion and more fins and much lesser weight. Um, on top of the torque conversion function, where basically you, you, you put in one RPM, let's say you put in 2,000 RPM, but only 1,000 comes out with more than double the torque, you can say. That's what the torque converter does at low RPM. But then we don't, actually you, lo you lose some efficiency when you torque convert. You get more torque, but you lose efficiency and you create heat. So you don't want to do that too often, but momentarily it's absolutely fine to get, get the car rushing away or something like that. But if, we, if, if we're not pushing full, there is no reason to use the torque converter. Then we will take off more on the rear electrical motors to have less energy losses. And then we feed in this hydraulic uh, coupling, which is more like a traditional hydraulic clutch, where you have these brake bands. Um, so you don't actually have to use the torque converter, but for maximum acceleration, it doubles the torque at low RPM. Means it's more acceptable to be in such a high gear. Um, so this is really a, a key component to make the direct drive work really well. And to put it into perspective what it can do, if we turn off all the electrical motors, uh, and just take off on the combustion engine. Then we can go zero to 60 miles per hour in about four seconds in seventh gear with the help of this thing. If we turn off the combustion engine and just run on the electric, rear electrical motors on the rear axle, we can again go zero to 60 in about four seconds because we have almost 500 horsepower only on the rear axle, but again with very high gear rates you as they're direct driving on the wheels, otherwise it would be shorter than four seconds. But then combining the two and then feeding in the uh, electrical motor also on the crank, we can go with spinning wheels, I mean as much as the grip allows, zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. And we can keep on spinning the wheels if we want up to around 160, 170 miles per hour in the dry, meaning there is no need for any gears. Uh, in the torque conversion part of the hydra coupe, this is called a stator. When you're torque converting, this is actually sitting still, held still by a shaft from the direct drive unit. Uh, when, you, when you're spinning faster, it's actually start spinning with the, with the whole unit when you're not using the torque converter functionality anymore. This is the turbine wheel. It's connected through a shaft to the direct drive. It spins with the output shaft, uh, the input shaft of the direct drive while the pump, the hydraulic pump, which this area is called, spins together with a flywheel. Um, so this starts rotating at, for example, 2,000 RPM around here, um, shooting oil into these veins. This starts spinning at about, this unit starts spinning about maybe 1,000 RPM, and then you have almost double uh, torque due to the, the RPM difference and the torque conversion effect. That's what it does. But as soon as you lock up the um, the clutch, it does nothing anymore. It just sits there, rotates with like a big flywheel. As soon as you're in lockup mode, it does nothing. 